In the last video, we saw how Unwin notes that we assume our own culture is the most developed of all cultures and that every change in our cultural condition is evidence of higher cultural development. But he called this a quaint and comfortable doctrine. And until it is dispelled, we shall understand neither our own culture nor that of any other society. In fact, some of the characteristic changes of our cultural condition are in fact evidence of regression, and the fundamental concepts of Unwin's work explain them. Here I want to focus on George Gilder's Men and Marriage, another work that academia hasn't given the consideration it deserves, and for similar reasons. Although he doesn't mention Unwin at all, Unwin's ideas underpin his Let's look at the topic of homosexuality first. According to Gilder, civilized and productive societies reflect the long-term disciplines of female nature, upheld by religious and marital codes. That is exactly what Unwin found. Women are more important than men, and prenuptial chastity is the decisive factor. In this sense, Civilization represents a heroic transcendence of the most powerful drives of men. Insightfully, Gilder describes homosexuality as merely the most vivid and dramatic manifestation of the breakdown of monogamy, an extreme expression of the sexuality of single men. This is because, as the longer horizons of female sexuality give way to the short-term compulsions of masculinity, civilized societies break down into polygonous and homosexual formations with related outbreaks of feminism and pornography. Research confirms Gilder's views. Typical gay city inhabitants spend most of their adult lives in transactional relationships or short-term commitments of less than six months. In Cruise Control, Robert Weiss writes that for some gay men fully committed to open sexual choices and experiences, modifying their sexual behaviour and restricting their sexual freedoms is like going back in time and surrendering to homophobic attitudes often found in conservative culture. It just doesn't feel right. As William Aaron put this in his autobiographical book, Straight, in the gay life, fidelity is almost impossible. Since part of the compulsion of homosexuality seems to be a need on the part of the homophile to absorb masculinity from his sexual partners, he must be constantly on the lookout for new partners. Constantly the most successful homophile marriages are those where there is an agreement between the two to have affairs on the side while maintaining the semblance of permanence in their living arrangement. Homosexuality then is primarily a consequence rather than the cause of cultural decay. Whenever monogamy breaks down, polygamy produces homosexuality. As George Murdoch showed, this is one of the strongest examples of correlation in all of anthropology. The streets of falling Rome were rife with male prostitutes because marriage had become so unpopular. Tacitus says that the Teutons did not laugh at vice nor regard it as the fashion to corrupt and be corrupted. For a woman to limit the number of her offspring, he adds, was accounted infamous, good habits here being more effectual than good laws elsewhere.